Hi everybody. So this week one of your tasks in history is to have a go at creating your own maze game based on the Greek myth of Theseus and the Minotaur. So we've done um, 3D maze games this year in year five so I'm just going to hopefully remind you how to do them and then you can have a go and create your own games to play. So we're going to use the app called 2DIY3D. So in my search bar there, I'm going to start typing that in. So 2DIY3D. Now, if you have a look, there are two. We want this one here with the arrows. So I'm going to click on that, click on it again, and press launch app. Lovely, right. Now you're going to get two options here. You can create a simple game that has one level. That's absolutely fine. Or if you want to challenge yourself, then have a go at the my game option, which you can make more than one level. I think it's five you can make. You've got a few more types of walls and ceilings you can choose from. You can have background music and you can have water and fire as obstacles as well. So I'm going to click on that one. So this is my design area. This is where I will build my game in 2D before having a look at what it looks like in 3D. So over here, you've got all your options. We're gonna look at this one first. This is the ground. So obviously what your player will be running on or walking on. So if you click on that, that will give you lots of options. You can click general as well, but they are more background than anything. So I'm going to click here. Um, mine's underground because I am going to base my game on Theseus and the Minotaur and the labyrinth was underground. So I'm going to click on that, have a bit of dirt. OK, um, the next thing I want to think about, I'm going to look at this one is ceiling because again, it's a labyrinth, so I want it enclosed. I don't want there to be any um, sort of sky. You can choose for yours um, what you want. Now you can draw your own if you want to, or if you come up here to clip art, you can choose some of the ideas there. There are lots of other bits, but I'm gonna go with the ones that say ceiling tiles. So if I click on that and press okay. Now you won't see that yet. You'll see that when we go into the gameplay. Um, you can choose your sky if you want. If you're going to have an outside area to yours, I'll just leave it on cloudy sky. But there are options that you can scroll around and have a look at. Um, and then I'm going to leave the other bit for now. Right, these are two I want to look at. So these are the ones where um, we're going to draw some walls because obviously we need to create the maze to the game. So I'm going to click on this one here. Now, if you double click, then again, you can go to clip art, you can change it, um, you can draw your own. So maybe you want it a different color. It's really up to you. I'm going to keep it as the stone. So it'll be the same as the ceiling. I'm going to press OK. So to build your maze is really quite simple. Basically, click on the squares and start plotting out your map. Now you can click individually or what you can do if you want to. Um, now I don't, I want mine to be completely enclosed, is you can click on there and just drag it. So keep your finger held down and then just drag all the way around, look, nice and simple. Now, when you design your game, one of the tips I gave my class when we were doing this is make it exciting, make it challenging, but don't make it too difficult because if it's too difficult, then nobody would want to play your game. And if it's too easy, People will get bored and again, they won't want to play it. So really think about your design. I'm kind of, I don't really know what I'm doing with mine, if I'm honest. Now, if there are bits you don't like, what you can do is you can go to this one here with the rubber on it and you can just start clicking out bits of walls. Okay, so you can make it as simple or as tricky as you like. Now, I'm going to leave it like that for a moment. Shall I? Don't know. Let's come on, mate. There we go. And then we'll get rid of that bit as well. Right, I'm going to leave it like that for a minute because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at it in the gameplay mode and then see if I'm happy or not. So, what you do to check it in 3D, if you press the play button at the top, now it'll give you this blank bit and I'll show you how to fill that in in a minute. Press play and then that should show you your game. So, you should be able to see now that mine has got the ceiling on it. And I can see the ground and then I can walk around. Now, um, in the top corner, you should be able to see a map and the little purple blob is you. And in a minute, when we start adding in 
the um, points and the baddies, then you'll be able to see those on there as well. And I'm really bad at navigating. Here we go. Right. So that's fine for now. Once you're happy with that, then just press the red arrow to go back. So the next thing I can think about doing is maybe adding in some scenery. So again, if you double click on those, you can go to clip art, you can change it to what you like. There's all sorts of different things there. Um, that's in the history one. So you might want to pick something from history look. I'm going to go back to the scenery though, and I'm going to click on the pillars because they look a bit Greek. Um, I'm going to add some of those in, in places. Uh, maybe just, you know, in fact, maybe if I take out some of these, I can use them as walls as well. There you go. So that is um, some scenery. Pop in what you want. Like I say, it's your game. If you want to put water in, you can put water in. Again, you just drag it. If you want to put fire in, you can put fire in. Um, you can double click on those. They will change color. Double click on that and again, um, that will change color. And if I show you what that looks like, so on your map, you will see up there, look, where the fire and the water is. And if I can get out of here, there you go. So there's your fire. I've lost half a life, look, and there's the water. And you can't walk over the water. You can walk over the fire, though, but you will lose parts of your life, which if you can see up here, look, is going down. Oh, dear. OK, so there are other options that you can have. And there's my pillars. Look, you can see those as well. OK, right. So the next thing then is you need to think about your baddie for your games. There needs to be something that will um, either make you lose a life or maybe go back to the start. Now, obviously, my game is based on Thesis and the Minotaur. So these are the baddies, these little red things over here. So I'm going to click it and I'm going to start him just there. I'm also just going to get rid of those a minute. Oh, there you go. So if I double click on my little red man, again, you've got lots of options. You can design him yourself or you could go to clip art and change him. Luckily, there is a Minotaur character there already. So I'm going to click on that and use that one. Now you can choose the movement. So do you want your monitor to just move up and down in a straight line or side to side in a straight line? Do you want them to move right to left a bit random or do you want them to chase after your player? Now I'm going to go for that one because when you play the game, it does add a little bit of suspense to it for you and makes it a little bit more real, which, you know, makes it a bit more exciting, I suppose, isn't it? Um, you can choose an action. So does it just turn around and rotate and always face the player? Does it um, grow bigger and larger, bigger and larger, bigger and smaller, sorry, does it wobble, um, does it spin and turn on the spot, I'm not going to have any action for mine. Um, you can do sound effects, so when you bump into the baddie, what sound effect is there, there's loads of different ones there, again, I'm not going to have one, um, but damage, I'm going to look at the damage, so you can choose, does your baddie get you to lose a life, lose a point, go back to start or do nothing, I'm going to have lose a life. Now, up here, you've got a button that says copy to all. So that means that if you want to have more than one baddie, if you want them to all be the same and to all have the same movements and actions and sound effects, then if you press that, then what that will do is make all of yours the same. Now, I'm only going to have one, so I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, and I'm going to start him up in that top corner there. My next thing I'm going to do is think about well, how many. Um, coins do I want to have um, to get to the end of the level so I'm going to choose five and um, what you need to do actually no, I'm going to choose three for the first one because it's the first level again click it drag it to where you want them to be double click it and you can change them I'm going to make it into a Greek pot because we're doing the Greeks and my game is based on a Greek myth um, movement I don't want any movement on mine or actions Sound effects, yeah, let's go for a sound effect. Let's have, what have we got? Oh, 
You can really annoy your parents with these ones if you want. There we go, I'm gonna go for that one. So let's click that. And then you can choose how many points you want your item to, to give up to 10. I'm just gonna have one and I'm gonna press okay. Now, if I double click on that again and go back to that copy to all, then what you'll see is down here at the side, all my coins have been changed into pots and then I can just choose where I want them to be. So I'm just gonna dot them around. Okay, right. That should be my game ready. No, in fact, there's one more thing I'm gonna look at. If you go to other down here, you can choose your lighting. So be, you can choose it to be quite bright, normal, dark, or very dark, so nighttime. Now mine's underground, isn't it? Um, the very dark is quite dark, um, so I'm just going to go for normal dark for mine. You can choose choose your wall height if you want to. You can also choose background music, so to add a little bit of a vibe to your game. So if it's quite an exciting game, you might have some nice, happy, exciting music. If it's a bit of a spooky game, you might choose some spooky ones. I quite like, if I click on that, yeah, that's quite a nice one. It says Egypt, but, you know, ancient Egyptians, ancient Greeks. Yeah, we'll go for that one. Um, and then this says here, loop background music. So that means it will keep playing it for you. Right. Now, let's have a look and see what that looks like. If I press play. So you can see where I am in purple on the map. I need to get to the yellow coins and you can see that the Minotaur is on the move. So I need to try and get those coins before he comes and gets me. Let's have a little look. Oh, he's always catching up. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it's, oh no, I'm just not very good at this. There you go. Now if I keep going, I need to try and get all three so I can show you what happens. So I think I might be able to do it. Oh, there we go. So once you complete the level um, and you've collected all your coins or your player has, then it will say well done. So I'm going to press no for now. If you want to, then what you might want to do is add another level. So up here, press a little arrow, it'll take you to level two. And you can see that it's kept all of my um, coins as the pots and I still got my minotaur there. And you can go up to level, if I keep clicking level five, okay? The other thing I need to do, I'm gonna go back to level one, is I'm going to click on this little book up here with the eye on it. And that will allow me to give my game a name and put some instructions in. So let's call it the, oh, the lair of the minor tour would help if I spell everything correctly. And some instructions. Now, if you want to, you can record your instructions there. I'm going to type mine. So collect the ancient Greek pots and avoid the Minotaur as you try to escape from his underground, let's put underground, lair, okay? Um, if you want to change, obviously, the text, you can change the text on those. You can click the box here and that will change the colour. There you go, you might want different colours. Um, you can change the number of lives that, you're, that you start your game with, so between one and five. I'm going to start with three, I think. Um, you can give it a time limit, so if you want to put a little bit of pressure on the person playing the game, then give it a time limit, you can change that. You can change the sound that it makes when it's game over, so for example, if you lose all your lives, um, and you can choose a sound for when you complete the level. Okay, so then if we press play, then you can see that that all pops up just there. Um, if you want to, when you do your other levels, then you can give them another title, some more instructions. So you might want to change, for example, how many lives you have on your second level. You might want to make it a bit harder or a bit easier. You might want to change the time and you might want to have different objects that they have to collect. Oh, so it's completely up to you. Um, so there you have it. That is how you create a game.
Oh no. I don't know what I've lost because I don't know what I was playing. So that's got a bit weird there. But anyway, um, have fun, play around with it, um, create your game. If you're basing it on the, the myth of Theseus and Minotaur, brilliant. If you want to try something different, maybe a different Greek myth, then go for it. Um, and we look forward to seeing what you make. <laughs>